today, let us take some time to study the Word of God together with a sermon titled, Those Who Are Worthy of the Kingdom of God. Let me tell you about a person who is very famous around the world. His name is Rockefeller. He is widely known as the King of Oil. In Rockefeller's company, there was an employee who always boasted about his company and the quality of his petroleum products, saying, the quality is very good and the price is very cheap. When the employee went on business trips, he usually used a hotel at his lodging. Whenever he signed his name at the registration desk, he first wrote down $4 a barrel standard oil and thereafter he signed his name. Not only that, whenever he had a conversation with the people around him, he always told them that it is $4 a barrel in standard oil. By doing so, this was how he earned the nickname a barrel of oil, $4. Wherever he went and whoever he met, he always talked about a barrel of oil, $4. This was how a barrel of oil, $4, became his nickname. Only after talking about the price of the oil, he would begin his conversation. Although it is not easy to have a meal with the president of the company, Rockefeller contacted this specific employee and they had a meal together. While they were eating, Rockefeller realized that this employee was so passionate about the company's products that he boasted and praised the company's products even while he was talking to the president. Rockefeller was very happy, thinking, what I have heard about him is true. This employee is very passionate about the company's products. After some time, the employee succeeded Rockefeller as the president of the company. His name is John Archbold. This employee's passion touched the heart of the president so much. He profusely boasted about his company's products all the time, no matter what position he held and what task he was entrusted with. Even after becoming the president of the company, he continued to boast about his company's products before proceeding to the main topic. He was so passionate that among many other presidents in the business field, he was recognized as the most competent president. In modern terms, he became legendary. This is an anecdote about Archibald. As I read the story of this man, a thought came to my mind. Do we profusely boast about our church, our truth, and our saviors, God the Father and God the Mother, who we believe in, before we talk about something else? The reason why I'm telling you this story today is because we need to think about who is worthy to enter the kingdom of God. At this moment, are we living the life that is worthy to enter the kingdom of God? When we see the example of this man, we can ask ourselves, are we worthy to enter the kingdom of God? If we did not carry out the gospel work as passionately as Archbold, would we be worthy? His example has given me an opportunity to reflect on myself. Just like the title of today's sermon, let us think about who is worthy of the kingdom of God. As we look at the parables Jesus taught us, let us not be idle wasting our God-given time. Instead of talking about meaningless things such as soap operas or politics, whenever we meet people, let us first talk about God, even though it is just for a brief moment. How beautiful is this place, Zion! Through the prophets of the 66 books of the Bible and the revelation of God, it has already been made known to us about what a glorious place Zion truly is. That employee was so zealous about selling a small barrel of oil. 
we are doing a far greater work of teaching about eternal matters and bringing the news of the forgiveness of sins, eternal life, and salvation. Aren't we lacking and boasting about them? This thought came to me. Therefore, our Zion family members should not waste time this year. We must be like the apostles 2,000 years ago who shouted, Believe in the Lord Jesus, then you and your household will be saved. I believe that we must be able to express this kind of passion to anyone we meet. Today, let us find the answer about who is worthy to enter the kingdom of God through what Jesus has taught us by turning to Matthew chapter 25. Let's take a look at the book of Matthew chapter 25, verse 14. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with the two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, You entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers, so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For every one who has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. We have learned about the parable of the talents many times. This parable contains Jesus' teachings. Since these events will surely take place in the last days, Jesus already prophesied 2,000 years ago about this matter. Among these servants, who is worthy to enter the kingdom of God? Come and share your master's happiness. These words were granted to those who gained five more talents and two more talents respectively. The one who had received the one talent said, I hid it in the ground. I hid it, and I did not waste any of it. Everyone, although the servant did not waste one talent, what about its value? Inevitably, the value decreased. Through the words of Jesus recorded in Matthew chapter 25, we must seriously think about who is worthy to enter the kingdom of God. Daniel also mentioned this matter. Let's take a look at the book of Daniel chapter 12. In Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, it says, At that time, Michael the great prince who protects your people will arise. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. 
Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens. And those who lead many to righteousness, what will happen to those who lead many to righteousness? They will shine like the stars forever and ever. The work of the gospel that we are currently carrying out is the work of leading many people to righteousness. In the parable it says, I gained five more talents. I gained two more talents. This is also a lesson concerning the gospel work. God always awakens us to the fact that our gospel must have such prosperous results and also lets us know that our gospel will never fail. As long as we preach the gospel, these prosperous results will surely come. However, during the process, we encounter many difficulties and we also need patience. In preaching the gospel, we need to summarize some of the teachings that Jesus has given us through the Bible. Firstly, we should not be affected by the opinions of others. This person said this, and that person said that. We must never be affected by the slander and defamation that try to hinder the Church of God. We should carry out our gospel work only according to God's will. We should not stumble or be swayed in this direction or that direction because of what people around us are saying. Without the truth that comes from Zion where God dwells, we cannot completely heal the world. There is no other way than the gospel, the truth of the new covenant that can cure the disease called sin. We all have clearly understood these things. Since God has allowed us this clear and perfect truth, we should now play a role in saving the world by introducing and proclaiming the truth. When it comes to carrying out the gospel work of saving the world, we should not be affected by others' comments or opinions. Secondly, we should not pay too much attention to what the people in this world are doing. When people in the world talk about going on a diet or doing other things, if we are influenced by such trends, we may neglect the gospel work we must carry out and mistakenly think those things are more valuable. That is why the Bible and the prophets awaken us to the fact that we should never care too much about what other people are doing. Now I am sharing with you the secret of how the person who received the five talents ended up with ten talents. Don't be easily swayed by other people's opinions and don't pay too much attention to what other people are doing. We should look only to God's opinions and believe that the most viable thing is to live a faithful life by carrying out the work of God. Only then will we live our lives in accordance with the prophecies and gain ten talents. In other words, we'll be counted worthy to enter the kingdom of God. In the book of Daniel, it is written, those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars of the heavens forever and ever. Through the lessons in the age of the Father and the age of the Son, let us find out who was chosen by God as worthy to enter the kingdom of God. Through what happened in the past, let us also find out what we, who are living in the age of the Holy Spirit, should do in order to become the ones who are worthy of the kingdom of God. Let us move on to the age of the sun. Let us turn to the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 42. In Acts chapter 5, verse 42, it says, Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. It is a record of the daily gospel activities that the apostles carried out in the apostolic age. The record says, In the temple courts and from house to house, day after day, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. Weren't their actions similar to Archbold's in the story I told you earlier? 
Whoever he met, Archibald, always mentioned the phrase, a barrel of oil, four dollars, standard oil. Only after that did he talk about the main subject. As we can see here, they are the saints of the early church, right? Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. In the age of the Father, there were those who testified about God Jehovah. In the age of the Son, there were the saints of the early church who preached about Jesus. Then, what should we do in the age of the Holy Spirit? Let us substitute the name Jesus in the age of the Son with a new name in the age of the Holy Spirit. Day after day, in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that An Sang Hong is the Christ. Just as the name of the Savior in the age of the Father and the name of the Savior in the age of the Son were proclaimed in the age of the Holy Spirit, we must never stop teaching and proclaiming the name of the Savior, Christ An Sang Hong, who came with a new name and the glory of God the New Jerusalem. That is why the Bible describes the early church as the church in Ephesus, in the history of the seven churches in the province of Asia Minor. What does the word Ephesus mean? It means desirable, the greatest, the most worthy, and the most desirable faith. Throughout history, this is the type of faith that the saints of the early church had. As we trace back their path of faith, we can see that day after day, in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. Let's move on to chapter 8. Let's take a look at the book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 35. Then Philip began with that very passage of Scripture and told him the good news about whom did he preach about? Jesus. We know this scene very well. This is the story of Philip baptizing the eunuch who was in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. Among the many acts of the early church, what did Philip do here? Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. At that time, the name of the Savior Jesus was not commonly known. To those who believed in God at that time, no other name was given as the name of the Savior except for the name Jehovah. However, Philip went to the eunuch in charge of the treasury in the palace of Candace, saw him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, Do you know whom this passage is testifying about? The eunuch replied, I'm sure it is a prophecy, but I do not know whom this is testifying about because I do not have anyone to teach me. So Philip taught him, saying, The one whom Isaiah the prophet is testifying about is Jesus. In this way, we can see the scene in Acts chapter 8 where Philip preached about Jesus so that the eunuch could have faith in him. Throughout any age, those who are worthy of the kingdom of God live this kind of life. Philip entered the kingdom of heaven and the members of the early church also entered the kingdom of heaven. In other words, they can be seen as those who are worthy in the sight of God. Let's see the scene where Peter testifies that Jesus is the Christ. Let us turn to the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 11. In the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 11, it says, He is the stone you build is rejected, which has become the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Then what is our situation compared to the time of Jesus' first coming? It is very similar. The name of the Savior known at that time was Jehovah. At a time when people only knew Jesus as a carpenter's son, the apostles boldly testified, There is no other Savior but Jesus. There is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. 
The name of the Savior spread from one man to two, from two men to four, from four men to eight, from eight men to sixteen, and from sixteen men to thirty-two. Gradually the name spread throughout every town in Judea. They were able to spread this new name of the Savior because they had absolute confidence and faith in God. They preached with confidence and with courage that Jesus was the Messiah and the true Christ who came to this earth to save mankind. They did not speak reluctantly, fearfully, or with frustration, but testified about Him boldly. Such people were counted as worthy to enter the kingdom of God. As it is written in Daniel chapter 12, They were those who lead many to righteousness and receive the glory that will shine like the stars of the heavens forever and ever. Likewise, in the age of the Holy Spirit, there is no need for us to hesitate. It is because the name of the Savior is prophesied in the Bible. We learn that Zion is a place God Himself established and has prepared for our salvation the place God predestined to give us the blessing of eternal life, and the place God built with the determination to give us the forgiveness of sins. Just like Archbold, who became the president of Rockefeller's oil company, whenever we begin any conversation, we should always boast about our father, our mother, Zion, and the new covenant. No matter who you meet, if you do this first and thereafter present the main topic, you will probably get a nickname as he did. Even for a person like Archbold, a barrel of oil, four dollars, is more than a nickname. It is like a medal. It became a medal of honor. He worked with much passion and love for his company. As a result, the president came to recognize him. Although he started as a regular employee, he eventually became the president of an oil company. As we look at the history of this one man, it is the same for us spiritually. Spiritually, those who have gained two more talents are worth two talents, and those who have gained five more talents are worth five talents. Didn't Jesus say that he would do the same for us? Philip testified about Jesus, and Peter testified about Jesus. In Acts chapter 16, there is a scene where Apostle Paul also testified about Jesus. Whom should we testify about in the age of the Holy Spirit? We can find the answer through the past. Let us turn to the book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 31. They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Here too, when Apostle Paul was in prison, he gave glory to God and sang praises to God. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that prison was shaken, everybody's chains came loose, and the prison doors flew open. When the jailer saw this, he was shocked, thinking, all the prisoners must have escaped. So he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, but Paul and Silas stopped him. The jailer thought, these men are not ordinary people. They're being helped even by supernatural phenomena. Some great God must be protecting them. So the jailer asked them, Sirs, what must I do to be saved in this age? At his question, Paul and Silas answered without delay, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved, you and your household. At that hour, the jailer took them into his house, washed all their wounds, and set a meal before them. Afterward, he and his household were baptized and saved. Now we can see such amazing work of the early church through the Acts of the Apostles. When we look at this history, we can realize that the saints of the early church were always preaching about Jesus, 
who was barely known to the people at that time. Philip said to the eunuch, Believe in Jesus. Peter also preached in front of many people. God has never given us any other name by which we must be saved except the name Jesus. What did Apostle Paul preach to the jailer? Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will receive the blessing of salvation, you and your household. Today, in the age of the Holy Spirit, the name Jesus is widely known. However, in the age of the early church, the name Jesus was barely known, nor did people know who Jesus was. They were preaching about Jesus in such an age. In the age of the Holy Spirit, all of us have been given the mission to preach about Christ An Sang Hong. In this age, is there any other name by which we must be saved? There is no other name by which we must be saved. We cannot be saved except through Christ An Sang Hong and New Jerusalem Heavenly Mother. Therefore, we must preach Christ An Sang Hong, New Jerusalem Heavenly Mother, Zion, the New Covenant the Passover, and the Feast of God. If we build up a habit of preaching these messages in Samaria and to the ends of the earth, wouldn't God entrust us with the royal priesthood in heaven? Let us be worthy of the kingdom of God. Let me conclude the sermon after reading one more verse. Let us turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Let us take a look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 4. Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance and faith in all the persecutions. These things are what we experience while preaching the gospel and trials you are enduring. All this is evidence that God's judgment is right. And as a result, you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. Some difficult situations can arise while we preach the gospel. Let us be the ones who overcome all challenges so that we can be counted as worthy to enter the kingdom of God. If we have hesitated even just a little for various reasons, this year we should shake off all our fears and reluctance and preach. The main purpose of preaching is to let people know about the truth. As a result, we will bear as much fruit as God allows, won't we? Let us all set such a goal. How many people am I going to preach this word to in a month? How many times will I testify about God and boast about God in conversations? When we hear a sermon, we feel like preaching. But when we leave the church, all these realizations come to nothing. We should not have this type of faith. The principle of the new covenant can be built not only by hearing the word, but by hearing and putting it into practice. Let us pray to God like this. In order for me to carry out the gospel work, please give me faith, courage, and boldness. Oh God, please help me to become a wonderful person who can lead many souls into God's arms. In this way, let us offer up many prayers to God. We are not asking for a bad thing, but we are asking for what is good in the eyes of God the Father and God the Mother. Why wouldn't they answer our prayers? Furthermore, God will pour out the Holy Spirit upon us so we can carry out the gospel work. We can start first by participating in simple preaching. Whenever we are at home or have a conversation with others, let us boast about Christ An Sang Hong, God the Mother, Zion, and the truth. Any of these topics will do. I would like to ask you to develop this kind of communication method for yourselves. In this way, let us be worthy to enter the kingdom of God. Hoping that you have received much grace, I'd like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.